Good morning, everybody. Victor here. We just came out of beautiful Hillsborough Inlet and we were greeted with Lake Atlantic. I'm here with Brookie's dad, my future father-in-law right here, and we are going after mutton snapper. So my goal with today's video is if you're a beginner to walk you guys through everything you could possibly ever want to know on how to catch these fish. Starting with the bait, which is exactly where we're at. We are at our bait spot just a little bit north of Hillsborough Inlet, and we were greeted with absolutely perfect conditions. When it comes to snapper fishing, the most important thing, no matter whether it's yellowtail, mangrove, or muttons, is current. We got a chum bag in the water, right? If you chum and you're trying to catch bait or snapper and there's no current, what's gonna end up happening is your chum's gonna fall and all the fish down the reef line or the sand or whatever it may be, are not gonna find it. When you have current, your chum is being carried for miles and miles and miles. So now you're drawing fish from inside the reef, outside the reef, way down the line of your chum, and that's what you need. Fish use current to find bait, to, uh, bait flows past them, and everything looks more natural with current. So we got this chum bag here in the water, and what we're gonna try to do is catch ballyhoo, which is gonna be our primary bait of choice for these mountain snapper. So we've had the chum in the water for about five minutes now. And this guy right here wants to throw the net every single time he even gets a whiff of a ballyhoo. When you throw a net, those ballyhoos, they get spooked and they go back in the slick and then it takes them another five minutes to get comfortable. I want the ballyhoo to basically be eating out of the chum bag and on top of the water and that's when they're easiest to get. Which you can see they're getting, they get a little more comfortable every minute but as soon as you throw that net they spook and they start to get deeper and Look deeper right now victor yeah they're close i know you're fiending come on come on get the get the cast net on your wrist <laughs> <laughs> this is good for your video victor because not, you're trying to teach people how to catch muttons and not everybody knows how to throw a cast net this right here is called a ballyhoo same principle you got a big ring with mesh but what we're gonna do is i'm gonna let this float back behind the ballyhoo and then slowly drag it towards them so you don't have all this lead flying into the water. And then you pull it in into them. So you gotta let them get real comfortable and then you pull the net real fast and they get sucked right into it. Here, yeah, you know what works. I wanna do today? That worked good. Great, and look, I'm not wet. That's the best part too. I want to break their bills so that way they live better. So before we put them in the live one, I'm going to break their bills. These baits live pretty good, but they tend to get stuck in the corners. And I think that breaking the bills helps in um, them not being just as long and awkward, you know? So you could do this, you know, 10 times. You get six, seven, eight at a time. And you're going to be good and ready to fish. If you can anchor, it's always better to anchor. Sometimes when you're fishing really deep, it's better to drift, but we always try to anchor because you just catch a lot more fish. You can stay on the spot. We have a spot marked where Brooke's dad actually went out the other day and they caught five muttons. And the day before that, me and Brooke went out and we caught a bunch. So what I want to do is if I know I have a north current, it's going up the coast. I want to go past my spot by the amount of anchor I know I'm gonna let out. So if I'm in 100 feet, I wanna let out at least two to 300 feet of line. The more current there is, the more line you're gonna to wanna to let out or the more road you're gonna to wanna to let out. Always better to go further away and let out more line than it is to cut it short and to get too close to the spot because then you're gonna miss it and potentially anchor is not gonna hang. This is not a secret spot. We literally came out here. We're right on the edge of the reef in like 100 feet of water. I think a lot of people think you need secret spots with muttons it's true to a certain extent muttons are always on the sandy side of structure so whether it's a reef a wreck whatever it is they're not on the structure they're cruising around it they patrol they're like a ghost when you see them diving underwater so you always want to be on the sandy side of whatever structure you're fishing so if you mark something you got a good current and you want to investigate it anchor on the outside of that structure in the sand that's rock and you see how it kind of levels off? There's the ledge, and that's gonna be the sand. You want a really consistent bottom when you're anchoring. You don't want to anchor on all the jagged stuff. That is not good. So you guys see, I marked a nice knot of fish right there, which could be spawning muttons. Drop anchor now that I'm positioned how I want to be. The never-ending chain. We just got a new anchor and chain because the other day we came out here 
and there was a lot of current. So got a 22 pound anchor and 37 feet of chain. So I pray for the person who's got to pull this thing up, which is going to be me. When we set up our road system, we marked it every hundred feet and it really helps you get a perspective of how much anchor line you have out. So, so now I'm going to walk you guys through the rig, starting with my main line. I have a Daiwa Saltiga right here, 50 pound braid, seven foot colony rod. Okay. What I like to do is I like to do a top shot of mono with an FG from my braid to my swivel. And I always make sure that the line of my top shot is heavier than my leader. If you get snagged or break off and your leader is lighter than your main line, you're only gonna lose your leader, but you're not gonna lose your lead and your swivel and all this stuff. 6-0, must add, wide gap, circle hooks, the best hooks for muttons I've discovered. I really like them. And then a must add, three-way swivel. And so the way this is gonna work, this is just a little piece of mono, dropper loop. We're gonna put our lead right there. And then I got about a 40 foot leader. We're gonna come over here, grab one of these delicious ballyhoo, squeeze them in the live hole so they poop because they're full of chum. Okay, we are going to hook this guy in the tail. Okay, so he swims away from the boat and away from the tension. That way my leader doesn't get all messed up. Okay, I'm gonna throw them out there. You guys see all that leader. Muttons are kind of lead shy. They don't want to see or hear that lead bouncing. So that's why you have that real long leader to get your bait as far away from your terminal tackle as possible. Brian has a 16 ounce lead on, so his line's gonna be really vertical. I'm gonna put a slightly lighter one on, so that way our baits are staggered. Well, we're not getting any bites here, so like I said, you gotta find the line that they're on, so we're gonna drive around, but I'm gonna show you guys this cool thing. When you're dealing with a lot of anchor and heavy anchor, this ball is a lifesaver. I'll show you how it works. Put this ring on the line. Now we're gonna clip this in. So now this ball, what it's gonna do is, we're gonna drive towards the anchor and that ball is gonna get pushed down on the line and eventually lift that anchor up and that ring should go over the chain and raise the anchor up so that way you don't have to pull it in from the bottom. It'll actually float there right on the ball. Pull in all that anchor line. This is effortless because the ball did all the work for us. Slow down, Brian, slow down. Quick little anchor adjustment and hopefully we're on the fish now. We moved in I went up and down the ledge and tried to mark the fish to get right in line with them. You got one? Yeah, it's small, but... Put the light on the rod holder. Oh no, it's a yellow tail. It's a nice yellow tail, Brian. Yeah. Look at this thing. It's a good size yellow tail. Yeah, this is one snapper you can actually lift. So pretty. So this is not our target species, but it's bycatch. As you guys see, yellowtail, very gorgeous. A lot flakier, softer meat than a mutton snapper, but still good eating fish. I had a fish on, didn't know it. <laughs> uh, right after I said I was concentrating so hard. <laughs> oh man, he was just sitting down there with it. It's a snapper. Probably another yellowtail. It is a mutton. Really? Yep. It's a mutton. Short. Short mutton. Well, we got the target species. He's just, and I'm going to show you guys, real important to vent your fish. You see how blown up he is and how stiff he is? We're going to vent him so he can swim down freely. So this right here is a venting tool, which you should have when you're bottom fishing. And I'm going to take this venting tool and I'm going to go down. You hear that? You got to puncture and release the gases. So now, He's not going to be lifeless and he's going to be able to swim back down. He's going down, oh, he's but going. yeah, he's, he's gone. Right he's gone. So if you don't do what I just did, I've talked about it a million times in our videos. Barotrauma is the process in which a fish can't expel the gases in its air bladder, swim bladder fast enough. There's a lot more pressure down there than there is up here. So that gas expands and therefore they can't swim back down unless you vent them. We're back out here. We got rained out a little bit early last time, and that is the last thing you want to get caught out here. It is not worth your life. Lightning everywhere. It picks up. 
So we headed in and we're back out here. It's Sunday. We are anchored in a hundred feet of water and it is moving. We probably got four knots of current right now. It's like, almost like you're in the inlet. The other day we fished, we had probably around a knot. This is crazy. Since we have so much current, I want even more lead. I just put an eight ounce on the line first and then put the line through the eye of that lead. So now I got 32 ounce. And this is a day where you want a lot of leader. Like I said, the more current, the more leader you want. See, okay, so you guys also see we have braid on our reels. Mono works great and it's forgiving. But on a day like today where you really need to cut through the water and stay vertical, braid is definitely the clear winner. What a beautiful Look at that. piece of coral. And a lot of seaweed. Holy moly. I had a fish on that wrapped me in a rock. <laughs> that sucker is heavy in four knots of current. You know, I feel like this yellowtail deserves to live for his, for Let his, go. for his efforts. Man. Oh, yep, yep. There it is, huh? Fish like it's Pompano Beach. <laughs> Look at that. You're really taking a liking to Rodney these days, Brian. It's gonna take longer reeling it in or hand lining it in with that 100, 100 foot leader. Please be the right flavor. He's digging good. We tried something different, put on a really long leader this time. I, I don't know which line to pull on, there's so many <laughs> down there. And if it's the right fish, it's it, this long leader. It's so worth it. Yeah, it's so worth it. It's the right one, it's a mutton. It's a mutton! Oh, and it's a big mutton! Look at that thing! Yeah, baby! 100 foot leader for the win! Dennis, thank <laughs> you. I got no shame in holding another man's fish because I've been waiting for this guy right here. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful 10, 12 pound mutton snapper right there. Look at those colors, guys. This is why we spend so much time chasing these fish. They taste good, they fight good, they're pretty. Everything about these fish is just amazing. They're tricky, and as you guys see, they're smart. The current just started to die down, and I think that's why we got this fish. It probably started starting to eat. Circle hook, there's that mustad circle hook right in the corner, and it's really good when there's a lot of current. All you gotta do is reel. You don't even have to set the hook, and you guys can actually save 20% off. Use my code Landshark, I'll have the hook and all the stuff linked below. 28, 28 inches. Nice, he's fat though. Yeah, he's big. He's a fat one. Nice and fat. Was that on a gog lock? Um, this was on, on a half a gog. And Dennis's obscenely long leader. <laughs> oh man, I went to reel in to check my bait and uh, something smoked it as I was reeling it in. I don't know if he was just sitting there or I just got lucky. As soon as I went to pull up the rod, something ate it. I'm not gonna call it, but it feels like a mutton. He's digging his head down there. We got our other mutton sitting there, bleeding out. So that way when we fillet him, he's not all bloody on the fillet table. Mutton's just like any other fish, you know? Sometimes they're feeding, sometimes they're not. They have moods where they want to eat, and then there's moods where they eat all day. You just got to sit there patiently and, you know, have faith in your spot. If you know you've caught them there before, just wait it out. On the Conley Kingfish Rod, love this thing. A lot of times what the muns will do is they'll fight real good in the beginning of the fight, and then they kind of blow up. And that's when uh, that barotrauma occurs, and then they kind of just slide to the surface. You guys see these obscenely long leaders. It's the only tricky part is hand lining them in, especially when you got all that current, you know? But it helps if you take the mono and then kind of make like a bend in your wrist. And then I'm putting the line back in the water so that way it's not in the boat and hopefully it doesn't get tangled, you know? Trying to be observant of what my line is doing so that way I can reuse my leader. It's not all spun up. It's a mutton, I see color. 
Oh yeah, baby, look at that. Two for two, let's go. Look at that. That looks like a twin to mine, man. Yeah, man. Woo. It feels good, it feels good. I, I always feel like an imposter if I come out here and I'm trying to teach you guys something and it's not working out for us, but you gotta just put in the time, try different baits. Those, both these fish were on goggle eye chunks. Yours is bigger. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's probably 29, 30 inches, but both, I mean, amazing fish. You see how this fish, in uh, contrast to Brian's, has a really green back. The green fish come in from shallower water, the patch reefs, the um, grass flats, and that's why they take on that color. The offshore fish are actually more orange and pink because they've tagged mutton snappers and that's what they do. So when you get a really green mutton, it's usually from inshore. And right now, this time of year, is when they spawn. The full moon in April, May and June, they go from the wrecks, the reefs, the patch reefs, and they congregate usually on the edge of structure, like I said. So whether it be a wreck or a ledge, and they come in these huge concentrations around the full moon, and they get really stupid. Normally these fish are super smart. Um, we're on the back side of the full moon, so we probably have a few days left of this bite, but this might be the last good shot to get a lot of mutton snapper in South Florida until the next full moon, which is going to be in August. We have live ballyhoo, but we also have these guys. This is what we caught both the muttons on. This is just a goggle eye and nothing fancy. We're literally just cutting it right down the middle. And when you use the tail half, though, you got to cut the tail off because if you don't, it's going to be spinning down there like this and fish don't like that. Big fish, little bait. Because elephants eat peanuts. Up there. That's a 23? Yeah. Oh, wow. Your rod doubled over, huh? Brian's not much for the talking when the fish is on. After the fish is in the boat, he's very vocal. Oh, that's not a mutton. Well, I don't know. It could be just a bigger mutton. Oh, beauty. Nice job. This is heavier. This is heavier. Yeah, that's a big one. That's that's our biggest one of the day so far. That is a stud. This one's big. That, that one's going to be 32 inches right there. This one, this one's big because he's, he's fat, you know? Wow. We need a speech with this one, Brian. Come on. Well, the, the gogs work. And uh, we took the time to catch live ballyhoo. So when it slowed down with the gogs, I thought, why not try it? Man, I'm holding this belly in my in my hand, and this thing is fat. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it 15 pounds. We'll weigh it when we get back. It is extremely hard to feel when you're getting a bite because your line's being tugged by the current and you also have on pound to two pounds of lead. And if you can imagine that bait down there, your line, your leader in line is probably super tight. So unless the mutton swims away from you, if he's swimming towards you, you're not gonna feel it. There's just so much leader for him to swim around with without you feeling the pressure up top. fish. This one's bigger than the last one. All right. You're going to want gloves on for this one because he's still right. pulling. He ain't giving up. I got a big one on too. I got another rock. No. Ready, Vic? Yeah. Just. Oh, this is a big fish. This is a big fish. Yeah. It's another mine. I see the color. With my 20 pound mine, no way. <laughs> Don't be playing no trick photography on me with my 20 pound <laughs> mutton. Three, three muttons, one mutton. You know who the real mutton man is on the boat, not me. It's a Brian spirit animal. This guy. Put him back in. <laughs> I want to see you say that again. 
These make me happy. A little bit smaller than the last one, but still a bruiser. Probably, I guess, a 10 pounder. He, he fought harder than the last one that was actually a larger fish. There we go. I'm not feeding him any line this time. Right from the rod holder. That was a textbook mutton bite. A little tap, 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 and ran with it. I think it is. So we just had the current kind of die down. And as soon as it did, we got a bite. You ready, Brian? Yeah. Holy moly, we just netted more, more seaweed than we did mutton snapper. Number five today. She's a beauty, huh? Look at this one. She's a beauty. Another oh, gorgeous man, you're one. you're lucky he didn't bite you off. Look, Look at that. I am all, that's why you got to fish some serious leader. Look at that. Oh, done. Oh, yeah. We're going to bleed this guy and get another bait back down because the current slowed down a little bit for us. And I think that's what's making them bite right now. You can always tell how powerful a fish is going to be by their tail. See, this mun's got a big forked tail. Look at that thing. That's where he gets all his power from. Just beautiful. Just look at that eyeball. That is one photogenic fish. Ryan's on again. Making me happy. My favorite fish. Catch them while they're here. You got a glove up, Victor? Oh, yeah. This is my favorite part of the day right here, getting gloved up and leadering a fish. <laughs> getting ready for battle right here. I think leadering the fish is just as fun as fighting him on the rod. Bring him, <laughs> bring him you like filming them, don't you? Sliding on up. Oh, it's the smallest one of the day. That's okay. He's, he's still, still big. He still counts. We would be so happy to catch one of those on any me? day of the week. Are you kidding me? This this is a big a big mutton snapper. You know? Yep. Was that your half eating kingfish ballyhoo? This yeah. Look at it. I put it out there looking like that. This would normally be like, Yahoo, look at that nice mutton. But with this historical bite that's going on, it's it's one of the smaller ones in the cooler. But still, beautiful fish. All right, guys, we got it done. There's four of the six muttons with Mr. Mutton Man, Brian Christ. Happy. I'm happy, man. Can you shove them under it? So we got ice in there. But if you want your fish to be ice cold when they hit the dock, I'm gonna get a bucket of salt water, half a bucket, so that way it's not fresh water, and they're gonna be submerged in there, and it's really gonna cool down their core temperature. And you could even rearrange them so that way they're all sitting in that water. Get them like this, you know? See? Now they're all submerged in that ice water. Ready to be filleted. See you at the dock. I don't know what happened. Uh, it, our fuel gauge was telling us we had fuel, and uh, we just ran out of gas. And Captain Kevin from uh, Towboat US came by and gave us some gas, and that's all the Suzuki needed. There was nothing wrong with it. Just the, it was it was lying to us. It told us we had gas, but evidently we didn't. So I finally used my towboat insurance. Um, best couple hundred bucks you can spend a year. Towboat US. Come to the save save the day for us. Now we can go fillet our fish. Nice. <laughs> Can't wait. I'll see you guys later. You gotta I'm watch this one. one. That's land shark. Land, land shark. shark. I know. <laughs> I'll see you later. This is the biggest mutton of the day. And keep in mind their blood, so they lost 10 pounds, obviously. <laughs> 13 pounds. 
So if you account for the moisture loss and the blood, you'll probably be right around 14. It's a 15 pound class fish. You guys, this is such a special cooler and special day for us. This does not happen all the time out here in Hillsboro. You might have a few good days like this, but this has been going on for like two to three weeks and everyone that's actually been targeting them and putting in the time is coming back with coolers like this. This is what a cooler looks like when you go to the Bahamas or the Tortugas. Not usually out here in Pompano Beach. So when the getting's good, you gotta get out there. 14 pound mutton snapper. Might be the biggest one that's ever hit this fillet table. Gonna be using the dual edge deck stream. So I got a serrated side on one edge of the blade and then I got a regular edge on this side. So you might be wondering why two edges? Well, look at this, big scaly fish effortlessly through the mutton. Could you use a regular fillet knife? Absolutely. But I can tell you that this has become one of my favorite knives because nothing dulls a knife down more than a big scaly fish. So if I can avoid dulling my knife, I'm going to. See how easy that was? So we're gonna go now from the tail to the head. All these fish were bled. And we are gonna be having mutton snapper for dinner tonight. I can tell you that. Okay, got a big set of pin bones. We got a breakthrough right here, right by the rib cage. Gonna go right on top of the rib cage now, down on the other side of this backbone. And I actually want to look inside the snapper to see what he's been feeding on. Look at that and tell me your mouth is not watering right now. Some of the best fish we have here in Florida. I know it is one of my favorites. Seven months ago, I met Dennis and brought him on as the full-time videographer and editor for the channel. And I can tell you wholeheartedly, it was the best decision I ever made. Um, the videos, the stories we're able to tell are so much better. You guys have seen all the trips we've been on. We actually just got back from Belize, caught my first ever blue marlin. We fished a tournament, placed second, and the memories we're creating together with Brooke and on all these trips is something I can't put a price tag on. And I want to thank you guys for allowing me to live out this dream. And the knife that I use today, like I told you guys, this is an eight inch Dextreme stiff blade. You guys can find it linked below and you can actually save some money using my code Landshark. Okay, so if you guys are wondering where Brooke was on the boat today, it was just me and her dad, Dennis. She was actually making these bad boys right here. These are her homemade custom lobster nets, which she makes by hand. And these are the best lobster catching machine you guys can get your hands on. Florida lobster mini season and regular seasons right around the corner. So uh, yeah, if you guys are in the need for some lobster gear, you guys can find it linked below at floridalobsternets.com. Proud of her. She's been working in the hot sun every single day from like sun up to sundown. It's fake. Yeah, we're less than a month away. So if you guys are interested, floridalobsternets.com. She's also got tickle sticks and gauges. You guys check them out linked below. Brooke's dad said something on the boat today. He goes, Vic, you should make a simple mutton recipe tonight because a lot of your viewers probably don't know how to make all these fancy sauces, which I don't think he's giving you guys enough credit. You could do it, but I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. So salt, pepper on both sides. And I also already brushed these mutton snappers with some branch and vine lemon olive oil, which is right here. It's an infused olive oil. You guys can find that linked below. Great company out of California. And so salt, pepper, garlic, of course. And I wanna give it a little heat. So I'm gonna go in with some crushed red pepper just on one side. Brooke's family doesn't like it too spicy. Now, if you're one of those people that says cheese does not belong on fish, you can turn away right now. As I can tell you, cheese belongs on any food that it tastes good on, and fish is one of them. 
Cheese is basically a delicious, just fat. Um, fish is super lean, so you can afford to put some fat on there. We're just gonna go in with some Parmesan. Not a whole lot. You're not masking the flavor of the fish. You're just giving it a, a nice little friend for it to go with in the oven, you know? You know, Brick's dad really loves this recipe. And since this is his favorite fish, you gotta give the man what he loves. One last final look of our mutton snapper. It's hot in Florida right now, like really hot. So after a long day of fishing, want something light. Our fish is gonna be kind of heavy with all that Parmesan cheese, so we're just gonna do a big hearty salad. So the first thing I'm doing is zesting a fresh Florida orange. And I'm also going to juice this guy. He looks to be seedless, so we're gonna juice. And we're gonna make a salad dressing in this. Now I'm gonna do a little balsamic vinegar. Worcestershire, and this is all to eyeball. You could do this at home yourselves as well. Just kind of do things to taste, you know? Um, add a little bit of a time, and then once the final product is done, then you can taste it and see what it's like. And he's gonna thicken it up as well as make it sweet, in addition to the orange juice. So basic vinaigrette, olive oil, well, any type of oil to something acidic, right? And then we're gonna bind it so that way the oil and the vinegar doesn't separate with some mustard. It's a little trick you can use. So we're gonna go in with almost equal parts olive oil to our liquid. Tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Pretty much any mustard would work. Some dried oregano, crushed red pepper, lots of garlic, salt, and freshly cracked pepper. And I'm gonna dilute this a little bit with some water. Cucumber, scallion, white onion, feta, almonds, tomato, and some spring mix. And then we got our delicious white salad dressing right here. You know, you got a lot of different flavors there. You get crunch from almonds, you get the juicy tomatoes, the sharp onions. Um, the salad dressing brings it all together. You get a lot of that citrus flavor from the orange. Salads don't have to be boring. You just gotta dress them up nice, you know? We got the mutton snapper. And a nice big portion of salad. Isn't it? Look at that. Woo! I'm so grabbing it. Or somebody else does. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's gonna be a thing of beauty. I wanna show you guys the flake on this fish is gonna be incredible. Wow. This one? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, okay? Thank mm. you. It's tough to beat Mun Snapper, man. I am in heaven. I I have lived it. Oh, I fished with uh, Victor and Dennis on Friday, dove with um, Victor and Brooke and my wife on Saturday, and then out on the boat again today with Victor and Dennis to finish this video. And not only did I have a spectacular time, but you know, those two guys are so nice to fish with. And Victor on the boat's like, you know, what should we, you know, how should I do my cook? And guess what? I asked for uh, mutton snapper with Parmesan cheese. Look at that. He cooked me mutton snapper with Parmesan <laughs> cheese. My favorite fish cooked my favorite way. And I'm just, I'm just in awe. I'm gonna point out, this guy caught four muttons and he let it be known that he outfished me today. <laughs> Because when I got back to the house, everybody knew that he caught more than me. But it was well deserved. You know, some people got a real patience for it, and he sits there so patiently in tune with his line, just reading the bottom every little bite. 
And I get a little lazy sometimes. I put in the rod holder, but he's just sitting there holding his rod because that's his fish, you know? That's his favorite fish and it shows. Yeah. And the only thing missing from today is I wish Brooke was there to experience it with us, but like I said, she's been grinding, making these lobster nets, but I got to experience this incredible mutton bite with her a week ago. We got on them. I think this has been the best mutton bite out front that I have ever seen. Um, definitely for us, We've never caught mutton like this ever before, and now we've done it. Well, at least the family has done it three separate times, so it's been incredible. Mutton snapper are extremely hard to beat. Um, one of my favorite fish to eat, one of my favorite fish to catch, and yeah, I wasn't there today, but I'm so glad that I'm enjoying it. Me too. Um, I heard I still held the record for the biggest mutt. <laughs> <laughs> Let them be done now. That is true. That is true. Was, so, when was it? Last weekend? So an entire, this bite has been going on for almost like two weeks now. Hers was 14 pounds and the biggest one today was 13. So that is true. Yeah. Yeah, this is delicious. I hope they stick around a little longer, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But yeah. And Deb is a, a Deb is a very serious bottom fisherman too. She concentrates when she's bottom fishing and really tries to do her best as well. She likes to catch fish. We all love eating fish. I wanted to show you guys this. This is why we freak out so much over this fish. Look at this. Just these big, juicy flakes. Look at that white, white meat. It's really hard to beat. Mm. Amazing. He's speechless. He's, he's a little tired. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, check out Brookie's Nets in the description box below, as well as all the stuff that we fished with today. I'm going to have linked below for you guys, the rod, reel, line, tackle, all that good stuff. And until the next one, see you.